five sacks, four drops. Those are the two biggest stats that really killed us in this game. And to be quite honest, I think I think Cowboys Nation, I think even the Cowboys top brass, I think we really underestimated how big of a loss Amari Cooper was. Amari Cooper, the loss of Amari Cooper and later CeeDee Lamb due to a concussion really altered the landscape of the game. It made Steve Magnolo's job so much easier. He brought the pressure. Like, and you know, one thing that kind of irked me was I, I had a couple of Cowboys fans saying we didn't stick with the run. Even Troy Aikman was like, why aren't we running? The the thing is, the reason why we weren't running the football was because we couldn't run the football. I hope y'all are watching the same thing that I'm watching out there. We're, why stick with the run when the Chiefs are are nullifying it play after play after play? Every time we try to run it, it really didn't get us anywhere. It really didn't. <laughs> the, running the football was ineffective. Don't stick with something that's ineffective. That's insanity. Doing the same fucking thing and expecting a different result. Running the football was not the answer today. It, it would have been the answer if we would have had Amari Cooper out there. But Steve Smagnolo and the Chiefs defense didn't have to worry about the threat of Amari Cooper. They were doubling CeeDee Lamb. <laughs> they doubled CeeDee Lamb while he was out there. You have the defense has you can bring in more pressure. You can focus on the run. You can bring in more pressure to go after the quarterback when you don't have to worry about a dynamic playmaker on the outside. When you don't have to worry about Amari Cooper. When you don't have to worry about a guy that's top tier in this league on the outside, when you don't have to worry about that, it frees your playbook so much more. It opens that thing. It opens the playbook up, the defensive playbook. Steve Spagnolo, all he had to do was like, okay, we're gonna bring, we're gonna bring pressure, we're gonna bring extra men, and we're gonna focus on the run. That's what we're gonna do, and that's what they did. Even though Terrence Steele, Lyle Collins, and the offensive line was completely obliterated today. They were sent they were banished to the shadow realm today. They really were. And this was the worst performance I've seen in quite some time from this Cowboys offense. It was terrible. It was fucking pathetic. The offensive line wouldn't have been demolished in that fashion had Amari Cooper been there. Amari Cooper, people really underestimate Amari Cooper's presence out there on the field. He draws so much attention to himself. It frees up, it, it helps the run game. It even helps those offensive linemen. It really does. Because you're not going to, defenses are not going to focus on pressure. They're not going to focus on stopping the run when Amari Cooper is out there drawing attention. They're just not. He really alters the game plan. He really does. Amari Cooper, if we would have had him, we would have had a fighting chance today. We really would have. And I hope he comes back soon. And this is proof that I know Michael Gallup, this is his second game back from an injury. Michael Gallup is not a number one. C.D. Lamb is good, but he's not ready yet. He's not ready. And I hope he's okay. He had a concussion. You can see it in his eyes. He was out of there. But he's not ready to be the number one. He's not. Amari Cooper is our number one. We really missed him today. We really did. You know, even if he's not catching balls out there, he just, he all, like Steve Spagnuolo would have had, he would have had to divert resources and attention to Amari Cooper's presence alone. The pressure, stopping the run game, that wouldn't have happened. This is what killed us. And all that pressure was just too much for our tackles. It really was. Chris Jones had a field day today. Chris Jones had three and a half sacks today. The Cowboys only gave up 11 sacks up until this game. Today, they gave up five. And Amari Cooper is out. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> the Chiefs defense isn't that great. They just didn't have to worry about Amari Cooper out there. And later on in the game, CeeDee Lamb. They didn't have to worry about that. But this goes on to the coaching staff. 
Kellen Moore and Mike McCarthy. You knew that you were going to be out, be without Amari Cooper. You mean to tell me this is the best game plan you could have came up with? You mean to tell me that, and, and this is the thing, the Cowboys, we, even since the Jason Garrett era, we, we have a tough time adapting. We can't adapt. Coach Belichick is the king of adaptation. Look at what he's doing with the rookie quarterback in Mac Jones. Look at whenever someone goes down, so he can pull someone off of the fucking street, plug them in, and they can perform. The Cowboys, even since Jason Garrett, we have a tough time adapting. We can't, if, if the script isn't fit for us, it's a, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. If we don't have the actors to follow the script, it's a wrap. That's it. There's no ad-libbing. There's none of that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have that. We, we haven't had that for quite some time. And this just goes to show that it, it, this game goes back onto the coaching staff. Kellen Moore and Mike McCarthy. Dan Quinn surprisingly called a great game. He really did. The defense, for the most part, did their fucking part, man. They did. To hold the Kansas City Chiefs to 19 points at Arrowhead means a lot. The defense did everything they fucking could to win us this game. The offense just fell flat. It fell flat a lot. Uh, hey, blame goes on Dak Prescott too. Oh, hell yeah. He didn't look great out there. He looked terrible out there. But when you're rattled like that, when you're sacked five times, when you're running for your life most of the time out there, I can't really put it all on Dak. I can't do it. I can't fucking do it. That's, that, that's, that would be intellectually dishonest of me to do so. To just ignore the pressure that was put on our offensive line. To ignore Chris Jones having a monster game. To ignore five sacks would be disingenuous. It would, it would be. Right, so I can't put it all on Dak. I can't. But I will put most of the blame on this coaching staff. There is no fucking way that you should call a game like that knowing Amara Cooper is on the COVID list. You should not call a game like that. That was absolutely fucking ridiculous. That was terrible. Terrible. Absolutely fucking horrendous. You mean to tell me that's the best you can come up with, Kellen Moore? Coach McCarthy? That's the best you can come up with? You can't protect our quarterback out there? You're going to allow Steve Spagnuolo to dial the pressure all fucking game long? Sack Dak Prescott five times and completely nullify the run game? We couldn't run the football. It's not that... And I, I'm tired of people saying we should have ran the football. There is no fucking way we could have ran the football. We, had, we could not do it. We could not run the football. The Chiefs did everything in their fucking power to stop the run game and to dial up the pressure. The run game was ineffective. There's no fucking way we could have kept running it. So I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. This game, you still have, even though the four drops was fucking terrible, you still have enough talent on the outside. You still have enough talent to where you can call a different game. You have to you can change this shit up, man. You don't I'm telling you, Bill Belichick would have won this game. Bill Belichick would have found a way to win this game. With Dak Prescott, with Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, Michael Gallup, Cedric Wilson, even though he had two drops today. You still got Noah Brown. You still got uh Dalton Schultz out there. I guarantee to you, Bill Belichick would have found a way to win this game. He would have won this game. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. But our coaching staff can't fucking adapt. It's like, I, I, I don't get it, man. What's up? Is it Their collective IQ is so low. It's so fucking low. How can you call a game like this knowing you don't have Amari Cooper out there? How can you call this? You should have known that Steve Spagnuolo would have had extra men to dial up the pressure and to stop the run. You should have known this. How? How? Man, man, man. Oh, man. 
We're seven and three. We have the Las Vegas, aka the Oakland Raiders, are coming here on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. Let's please just win that game. I'm tired of losing on Thanksgiving night. Let's win this game. Let's beat the Saints the Thursday after that. And let's get back on track. The rest of this schedule is cake. We have Washington twice. We have the Giants. We have Oakland. We have the Saints the week after that. For, okay. We have Oakland slash Las Vegas on Thursday. Thursday after that, we got the fucking New Orleans Saints. And then we got our divisional games with Washington, the Giants. We got the Cardinals second to last game. And we got the Eagles last game, which really won't matter. That'll just be a rest game. We got this. But we need to tighten some shit up, man. This is troubling. We can't beat playoff teams. We we don't adapt well to change. And it just is frustrating. I hope they can figure this out. I really hope so. I doubt it, but I really hope they can. Bruce Arians and Tom Brady won the Super Bowl at 10 and 6. Can the Cowboys at least make the NFC Championship game at what? Uh 12 and 5? Can they do it? 13 and 4? Can we do it? Let's see.